stretched out seams, skip stitches, fabric that grows. Those are some common issues that you might run into when sewing with the knits. But don't worry, in today's video I will share six common mistakes when you're sewing with knits and how to prevent them. And the first common mistake is to pick the wrong fabric because not all knit fabrics are created the same. Just like Vowens right? you wouldn't sew a pair of jeans using lightweight silk chiffon. It's the same principles when you're sewing with knits. So for instance, if you're doing a tight fitting top, you need to use a very stretchy fabrics. Ideally, it should have some lycra or spandex included, or at least be a very stretchy rib knit. On the other hand, if you're doing like a more stable, say a jacket or a pair of pants, you need to use a rather stable fabric that doesn't have all that much stretch. So those are two things that are basics. And another thing is to think about which direction the fabric stretches in. So for instance, most knits will have crosswise stretch, meaning the stretch expands when you wear it on the body. Some fabric also has a lengthwise stretch, which is referred to as four-way stretch or two-way stretch, but it's basically the same thing. And that's very, very good, again, if you're sewing something that is tight, fitting, for instance, a pair of leggings, because they, you're going to move around, you're going to lift your knees, you're going to expand your legs in all kinds of directions. So it's very important then that the fabric also stretches lengthwise. So even though a lot of sewing instructions might just talk about the crosswise stretch, if you're doing something really tight fitting, definitely consider having a fabric with a lengthwise stretch as well. And sometimes having too much lengthwise stretch can also cause all kinds of issues, especially if you're trying to sew like detailing, for instance, if you're inserting a zipper, it's going to start to stretch out and look wobbly because you don't need any stretch in the lengthwise direction when you're adding a zipper because the zipper is rigid, right? That's why it's important to, in that case, stabilize the fabric. But ideally, you should pick something, a fabric that is much more stable lengthwise. The same if you're adding pockets, maybe sewing darts. It's going to be a bit more tricky if you have a lot of lengthwise stretch. And another thing to consider is the fact that some fabric are quite thick some fabric are quite thin, so that also influence the fit. So for instance, if you're doing a tight fitting top and you're using a fairly heavy fabric, then it's going to feel more snug because the fabric is become, it eats up a lot of space essentially. So again, you should definitely consider what type of garment you are making and pick the right type of knit fabric that will fit your product beautifully. That is to not cut the fabric straight. Now, Finding the grain line on a woven fabric is usually quite easy because you have a straight line along the selvage, so you can measure from that edge. But knit fabrics are not cut straight, so you don't have a straight selvage to use. Instead, you need to find that vertical formation, the rib column basically, that will help you to align the grain line on the fabric. And that can actually be quite tricky, especially if the fabric is dark, or you don't have great lighting in your cutting area, these things can definitely make it harder to find that straight line that you need to align the grain line around your pattern on. So what to do then if you do struggle? Well, I have some good tips. First of all, make sure that you have good light because that will really, really help to really see those straight lines, especially if the fabric is dark. And secondly, if you are having problems, because if you're cutting fabric on two layers, it's really, really hard to align the grain line, even if you fold straight, because a lot of knit fabrics are so soft and supple, so they're going to shift around. So the second layer it will be hard to ensure that it's also cut on the grain line, especially if you're using like a soft cotton knit or something like that. So what to do then, I highly recommend that you actually cut each pattern piece as a single layer. So that means cutting the sleeve two times, uh, in, and instead of cutting your bodice pieces on the top, on the fold, I recommend that you instead cut one flat layer. So you basically cut both two sides with the fabric open. That means you might have to alter your pattern. Also, I have a great tip in my video on how to cut knit fabrics that you can check out so you don't have to mirror that second piece if you just want to cut it, everything flat. Another thing, it's also good to know a super tip when it comes to cutting knits. If it has um, stripes, for instance, or another pattern, Sometimes you need to shift a little bit around because due to the knitting process, the stripes, the uh, horizontal stripes, they will actually come slightly misaligned, so to speak. So you have two, two options here. Do you want to cut straight along the grain line or do you want to ensure that the 
stripe is absolutely perpendicular and, and horizontal. So in that case, follow the stripe. So that can actually be helpful. If you have a grain line, just add a second um, arrow because that will ensure that you can align the grain line according to the stripes and not the vertical rib. And that is not picking a seam that stretches enough because you shouldn't use a straight seam when sewing it. I know a lot of people already know this, but it's good. It's a good reminder because you have to make sure that it's suitable for the type of fabric that you're sewing. So for instance, if you um, are sewing side seams on a regular sewing machine, I recommend either to use a zigzag stitch, a narrow zigzag stitch, or the overlock stitch that is usually included in most sewing machines. And if you have a serger, you should definitely use the overlock seam. It's, it's very durable, has fantastic stretch, and you can also prevent the fabric from growing because you have the option of using the differential feed, which regulates how the feed dogs move, and that will also prevent stretching out the fabric. The same thing when it comes to hemming, you should not use a straight stitch because that stitch will pop and break and it just won't look nice. Instead, either use a twin needle stitch, a regular zigzag stitch. You can also use a, the blind hem stitch if the fabric isn't too lightweight and stretchy. If you're a little bit overwhelmed about what stitch to try, then I highly recommend that you grab my free guide to all common stitches to use when sewing when it covers both side seams and hemming. And of course, both for a sewing machine, a serger and a common stitch show. Grab the link in the description section of this video to get your free stitch guide. Not using the right type of needles, because if you are sewing with knits, you should definitely use a needle that has a more pronounced ball point. It's usually referred to as ball point needles. And lots of brands actually have special stretch needles. So for instance, if you're using a sewing machine, you can grab one of these needles. Uh, the one I'm holding in my hand now is from Oregon. It's called Super Stretch. Schmetz, another great needle brand also has stretch sewing machine needles. Also, you can get one for overlock and cover stitch machine. And what that is, that it helps to penetrate the fabric, but without breaking the fabric, especially important when you're sewing with delicate knits. So first of all, make sure that you're using a stretch needle. And if you notice that there are holes in the fabric, despite using a ball point needle, that can happen if you're sewing a really delicate, lightweight knit fabric then switch to a smaller needle. And those stretch needles that I mentioned earlier, they come in a good range of sizes. You can actually find, I think, the smallest is around 65, I think. So it's very, very small. It's, it's so small, it's almost, for me, as I'm getting older, it's hard to actually find the little hole in there, but they're really, really good if you're sewing with delicate fabric. And if you're having problems with skip stitches, which is unfortunately quite common when you're sewing with knits, you can try to switch to a larger needle, but of course make sure that the needle isn't too large and will break the fabric. Again, always do a sample, right? So important, but so easy to forget. Trust me, even though I've been sewing for over 40 years, I still forget <laughs> that particular thing to do a sample sometimes, but I know that you won't, so that's why I'm trying to remind both myself and you watching this video. To not press as you sew, because if you're sewing in wind knits, you might feel tempted not to press because usually you are using a seam that both sews the joints the pieces together and overlock the edges right they overcast the edges so you might think i don't need to press because you're not able to press the seam open like you would with a regular straight stitch but that is not a mistake you should do instead always press as you go just using the same principles as you've done with the woven so once you're done with a particular step either sewing the crotch or the shoulder seams or the side seam, press. And there are a few things to consider when you're pressing knits. First of all, you will usually use a lower temperature. Even if you're using a 100% cotton fabric, I recommend that you go below the cotton setting because knit fabrics can be a little bit delicate. And you should of course start by pressing on the reverse side, but sometimes you want to press on the right side as well. Then I do recommend that you use a pressing cloth, like a lightweight piece of fabric to protect the surface. Again, always do a sample to make sure that the, um, the um, heat setting is correct because you don't want to ruin your garment, your, your precious garment using the wrong type of setting. So definitely experiment because there's no easy guide because you can't use the regular woven um, guidelines that are usually marked on a lot of iron. And another tip is to, if you're using um, polyester fabric, you need to go really, really low. And of course there are exceptions. You don't need to press uh, all type of knit fabrics. There are some, you know, there are very 
like negative ease and that will stretch out. You usually don't have to press those seams and don't go crazy if you don't get it flat. But on a lot of fabrics, especially using working with natural fibers, I do recommend that you press as you go using the same principle as you would do with a woven fabric. And that is to not stabilize the fabric enough because as we know, fabric that are a knit fabric will grow because that's the whole point of it. You want the stretch drive, but it can be also really annoying when you're sewing pieces together. So a few things that you should always stabilize. First of all, the shoulder seams when you're sewing a top because it's, it's the fabric you cut, you're sewing it crosswise and also a little bit on the diagonal, di diagonal. So it's going to be really, really stretchy. So if you're not careful, not stabilized, the shoulder seam will grow. So you'll end up with the shoulder seam on um, your arm instead, probably. If that's not the look you're going for, it's going to be a little bit annoying and also affect the fit and the look of the garment. So always stabilize the shoulder seams. There are lots of different options. You can use fusible interfacing, you can use cell fabric, you can use clear elastic. And if you, again, if you're wondering, oh, what method to, should I do and where do I place the stabilizer? Don't worry, I've done a video about that particular topic as well. Again, link in the description section. Another area that is very important to stabilize if you're using details on the garment, for instance, if you're adding a zipper, like front zipper, Definitely stabilize to make sure that the fabric doesn't stretch out when you're inserting the zipper. The same goes uh, for pockets, for instance. You need to stabilize the fabric. Either if you have a patch pocket, you should stabilize the opening so it doesn't stretch out too much. Also, when you're adding um, side seam pockets on your uh, pants, again, stabilize to make sure that the pocket area doesn't stretch out. So th those are really good reminders. So basically, you should use the same principle so when you're sewing woven, but when I'm talking about stabilizing fabric, you think about fusible interfacing, right? And those are excellent for knit fabrics as well, but you should definitely pick a stabilizer that is made for knit fabrics. So for instance, it should have crosswise stretch like this. And depending on what you're doing, it could be nice to have lengthwise stretch as well, depending on which area you are stabilizing. So for instance, you don't want lengthwise stretch if you're inserting a zipper, for instance, but in other area, if you need to stabilize the hem, for instance, it could actually be nice to have stretches in both directions. And again, the good news is I've done a video about that too. Yeah, I've done so many videos about sewing with it. So if you want to really dive deep into this particular topic and get more suggestions, again, check out that video as well. Link in the description section. I hope that you find these six mistakes helpful and you got some ideas how to prevent them in the future. And don't worry if you've done all of them or just one of them. I've done all of them and not just once, many times in fact, because yeah, sometimes you need to make the mistake several times in order to really learn, right? So be kind to yourself. It's not natural, it's not intuitive to sew with it. So that's why I'm making these kind of videos so that it will be easier for you to prevent these kind of issues in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Stitch safe and I talk to you soon.